What's up, freaks? So we are starting a new show called Zero Authority, where the Freaks TV team gets together and debates and talks about stuff that we're really passionate about, although we have absolutely no authority over these topics. So uh, today, I actually need to make a run and get some extra supplies for my daughter's birthday party. And we thought, hey, why don't Kai and I get together and talk about our favorite albums of 2016? What do you say? I give you a ride. Let's do this. Let's do it. Let's do it. It was a particularly good year, album-wise. Yeah, absolutely. I discovered a lot of new bands this year. And, and a lot of the bands that I chose for my, my list actually were, were bands that had been around, but I just discovered them this year. I think we lost many, many musicians this year. Yeah. Just to add that to, the, to, to 2016. But I had a lot of discussions this year uh, with other people about music and how music develops and stuff and I think there's still the saying that oh, there are no great musicians or bands or music anymore and I really disagree. I yeah, think, absolutely. I think it was very hard. I already had a list of my um, like best 50 albums of the year so I broke that down to the best 10 albums of the year. I don't think that we have even time for that so yeah. maybe maybe let's pick some albums that were very, very extraordinary, and I would start with a little band from Belgium called Oathbreaker, which uh. I didn't know before. It was a very easy choice to put them on a special list because if you hear it the first time, either you really love the vocals she's singing, the way she sings, the mix between clean, very operesque style, and then super harsh, black metal crying vocals um, is very very extraordinary and I can't hear that album that often it's not something <laughs> I can put on every day but um, it's, it's not good for the gym right it's <laughs> long maybe, runs it, yeah it's I think it's good for the gym oh, okay. for long runs I mean it's not something I would maybe listen in the morning or, uh, or when I want to chill okay um, I guess I'll do one I guess I'll start with uh, a band from Denmark that I kind of discovered through you, which is weird because I'm the oh. big prog guy. Um, but you told me to check them out because they were on tour with Catatonia, which is one of my favorite bands. They also had a good release this year. Vola's album, uh, I think it's pronounced In Mazes. No idea. In Mazes. Um, I remember the artwork. <clears throat> it's like, yeah. Like, like a, the got blue guy. Yeah. I think that this is their debut album, and from what I understand, they had two EPs before, which I have not heard. Uh, Mascot released the debut album, and it's, I mean, I guess it's Prague, modern Prague, so it's got some polyphonic seven-string guitars, super melodic, super weird timing. Um, but somehow really, really catchy songs. Yeah, that's the stuff. The know. songs are really strong, and uh, I really get into this kind of stuff, so it's kind of nerdy, but not uh, too noodly. Especially saying, I guess it's Prague, already already says that this is some serious Prague, and that's <laughs> not just some some guys who, who practice guitar for too right. long. It's progressive in the true sense <laughs> of the term. But the next band on my list... Non sequitur. Um, <laughs> this is maybe not progression, this is maybe one step backwards and it's also sometimes great uh, to hear something from a genre which you might consider like a lost genre where you think nothing will happen here. The next pick is Chemis with their second album Hunted. So I stumbled over them already last year but I didn't get it. Uh, they were ranked pretty high in the um, Decibel 2015 charts okay. and uh, even Albert Murdian, our friend at Decibel, commented on Facebook that he, that he liked them and I checked out the first album and yeah, I didn't, I didn't get it at the time, but this was a no-brainer for me. Uh, the second album, Hunted. I put it in and right away I was lost in the 
doomy riffs of Chemis and um, also he has this way to sing very 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 clear yeah. vocals maybe even in a in an 80s way yeah. I don't know yeah I like the vocals and uh, this was this was car sing-along music for me yeah cool. and there's still some growls in there and um, and then you're really really surprised when he starts to grow. Yeah, great cover points. art too. To follow up to that one, I have a good a good segue to my next band. You if, have a segue. If you're, if you're done. <laughs> next, <laughs> ne yeah, next time we're gonna film it on the segue. <laughs> Me and you, one segue. We will. <laughs> next album that I have, which is a good tie-in I think to The Chemist, is uh, a band from San Francisco. Um, F F Fallujah? No, on my top 20, Fallujah Dreamless is on there. But this is a band I'd never heard of before, and I think they have like 10 albums or something. <laughs> so I really came in late, and they've been around forever. And that is Hammers of Misfortune oh, yeah. with the album Dead Revolution. Yeah, I discovered it because Bandcamp did a top 30 bands who are making the traditional American metal scene great. Great list. And you know... I'll put the link at the bottom for anybody who has And you know who's that. also on that list? Chemist. Chemist. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, uh, Hammers of Misfortune were on that list, and they put links right in Bandcamp, made it super easy. And I just, like like you with Chemist, I got totally lost in it. It's, it's somehow ghost-like, because it has this sort of 70s prog, you know, with the organs and the kind of mellow melodic singing, um, interesting guitar arrangements, really good tr song songwriting once again. And um, yeah, it feels like Prague. It feels old, but it feels also new, which that's, isn't that so cliche? I'm going to say that for every album. It's really old, but it has a really new modern sound. You know what I mean? So next one on my list is a band um, I'm talking about all the time, last year, this year, um, and... Abba? Uh, <laughs> Abba. <laughs> Abbeth. Abbeth. Um, it's Oranzi Patsutsu. Ah, yeah. ah, our Finnish, yeah. right? They're from Finland. Yeah. So Oranzi Patsutsu, um, strange name, Finnish for orange demon, and they also sing in Finnish, if you haven't noticed. Uh, on, you can understand. If you can understand. So this is like psychedelic uh, post-black metal. I mean, it's, it's always hard to, to, to make categories for all of these bands. I saw them three years ago on a festival in Poland and it really, really, literally blew my mind. And they had an album out back then, which was great. And they really developed their psychedelic thing and they developed it even more on the album this year Vera Halatje uh, it's called mm. and um, so you don't find any blast beats or uh, any um, double bass kick drums the drums make it so exceptional because the drums are really 70s stoner drums and then you have these really scary vocal by John Hees and, uh, and great riffs great synth work so um, speaking about development and progression, these guys really have progressed over the years and they really have made something, something very, very unique. So I have one that's, I guess, really different. So I'm more, I'm, I'm uh, obviously for my top 10 list, you'll see, I'm definitely like the prog guy. Like I like all the prog stuff and I, I tried to, to I, I listened to a lot of other things than prog this year. Um, and, and, and for some reason, the, a lot of most of the, the stuff on my list was kind of proggy. But one of my most recent discoveries, which is made it to my top ten list, is I think technically a thrash band from Philly. They're Vector. Oh. With a K. Yeah. Which gets really confusing if you're looking for Vector with a C on Spotify and you get like all these DJs. So <laughs> Vector with a K for an album that... Uh, yeah, the album is called uh, Terminal Redux. And it has this like 80s cover, uh, I think, and these... It has like space. Yeah. It's like a, like, a water uh, like a watercolor painting of space. And, and, and then they have this logo that's like 
totally 80s thrash metal, but but also modern. <laughs> no. This album is thrash, but it's it's also super proggy in that they're really, really good musicians. It's super technical. You can hear everything really clearly. The voice is incredibly like raspy and harsh. Um, and it's mixed a little bit with some female vocals from time to time. But somehow the overall album, while it's kind of brutal and fast and, and, and jazzy and proggy, it's also super melodic. And this is the part that really like like grabbed me was like the epic melodic parts like finales I mean you just like get really swept up in it okay Europe when I talked about Oranzi Petsutsu and like progression so they I mean they clearly came from a um, black metal history and d developed so there is one other band who uh, has a even longer black metal history and um, but developed in a completely a uh, different direction, but I, I like it if a band develops and you kind of still feel the roots where they come from, even if you don't directly hear it, mm -hmm. but um, you know that this band um, had a way. So I'm talking about Ulver. Oh. So, um, so they brought an album out, which I can't even... I think it's all consonants or something. Yeah, right? it's A, C, G, T, whatever. Or I think there's some vowels in there. Um, I think uh, this is for um, for uh, this stands for the zodiacs. I'm I'm uh, I'm, okay. I'm not completely sure. Oh, so the Firemeyer is there on the left. So if you find a parking over here on the right, we should take it. Oh yeah. So um, I mean, these guys. They, they already were ahead of their time in the 90s when they were a black metal band. So I think Bergtat uh, and black metal album, which I discovered later, so they are not that popular, but yeah. um, um, it's, it's a great album. And then they, then they decided to do trip hop one day, Perdition City, around uh, the 2000s. And now this is, um, the new album is completely instrumental, electronic, but it's super deep, so it's an, it's an electronic album, but um, if you know the history, you really feel that this once was a super, super dark, aggressive black metal band. They even were a thrash metal band, then a black metal band, and now, now they threw all the guitars away and sitting at their laptops. This never went off my my phone, I had it on all the time, and it was always when there are sometimes these moments, oh, I don't know what I want to listen to. Yeah. And uh, that's why this is in my top five of the year, because I could listen to it all the time. Okay. Shall cool. we get some balloons? Let's go buy some balloons. Okay, so I think it's my turn. Yes. Um, the next album, we, uh, I think our, our, our viewers on Freaks TV already know the love we have for this band. Uh, because they're probably one of the most featured bands on the show. And uh, the guys are great, we love them. And of course, it's Haken's Affinity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but my girlfriend even said, hey, like, it looks like every video you put up is with Haken. And this was like throughout the year when we had the carpool karaoke and um, I mean, I think at least three episodes with Haken this year. Yeah. Prague, uh, carpool and uh, one on the road. goes on the road. And even a making of the uh, auto capella. <laughs> so all that aside, um, I discovered Haken actually through, through Jordan Rudis. Um, when we were filming with uh, Jordan uh, two years ago. Um, at the Music he, Messe? Yeah, at the Music Messe. Uh, he told me about Haken and he said, man, you gotta check out this band. And uh, I was like, cool. And so I bought the album, The Mountain, uh, on Jordan's recommendation and just couldn't believe I had missed Haken. And uh, Affinity, I mean, what can I say about Affinity? It's, it's, it's very unlike the mountain 
Um, it's unlike the EP restoration that they did in between. Um, but it's still Haken. It has more of an 80s kind of influence, which they, they kind of... They pushed that element through the whole, every single element of the release of the album, the artwork, the sounds, the synths, and it's just cool. It's, it's one of those albums that, for me, um, some albums feel like they are, like in a movie, they're like a setting, they're like a place. So when I listen to the album, I feel like I'm somewhere. I feel like I'm in a world that they created. I really uh, like about them are all the soundscapes, keyboards, everything that uh, Diego, 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 uh, um, what he creates, and um, and when you're into synthesizers and stuff, and uh, he even does you know tutorials and great interviews um, about this on. Uh, on YouTube. And, and he's using um, Jordan's Geo Shred. Yeah, yeah Geo you see that in the episode. Yeah, and I mean, it has one of the, the coolest breakdowns of, of, of any song for me this year. Uh, I think it's called, um, oh my God, The Endless Knot. Is that the name of the song? I think it's The Endless Knot, yeah. It has this. I mean, it's one of my favorite. Sorry, I won't do that again. It was so hard to pick albums of the year. So um, I got rid of certain genres and I also kicked out all the movie soundtracks. But there was one soundtrack this year which I consider an album and which was also played live and the film was only used as the backdrop and this is Atomic by Mark Y. Ah, of course, okay. one of my favorite bands too. So um, yeah, I mean, it's great, it's, it's very electronic, and um, speaking about bands and development, you can also say this about Mogwai. I mean, these guys are always like 10 years ahead of any other post-rock band. Yeah, so, I mean, what, what can I say about Mogwai that has not been said before? 15 years ago, I was really into like symphonic metal stuff. I uh, know. Uh. And uh, because I really like classical music, I really like opera, and I always liked the combination of metal and these things. Uh, and then I was into you know bands like Blind Guardian and like Rhapsody of Fire. Um, but but then but then for me the the genre kind of got stale, you know, and it was kind of just chuggy guitars and operatic vocals and strings and stuff. And I just kind of lost. I know what's coming. Keep on. I lo you know what. You know, you does he know what it's gonna be? <laughs> um, and then I, I learned about uh, a band from Italy, and you know the Italians. I think they always do it best when they combine their classical influences with metal. But a band called Flesh God Apocalypse, which has been around for a while, and I only just now discovered them. And the album is King, and this blew my mind because it's. Well, for one, it's symphonic all the way through, so much that the, the double CD special edition that I bought has one CD with the album and one CD of all the same songs, but just the orchestral version. Oh, wow. So it's not even like little violin here, little flute there. It's literally like would have to be performed with the orchestra the whole time. And I mean, it's, it's like death metal, I guess. Symphonic death metal, I guess, is what you would call it, because it has, um, you know, guttural vocals, also um, s melodic singing, plus some female vocals. But I mean, it it's done in the, in in my mind in a really unique way. And I mean, and there's no, I mean, y you got to give it to them. I mean, they went all the way with the concept. Um, yeah. So that's my last album. Awesome. But I think we have one special mention because Kai and I both have one particular album together on the list, and that is Opeth, Sorceress. It's a great album. I did not put it in the... Uh, I mean, it was an easy choice to put it in the top 10 because um, it, I, I really uh, 
anticipated, waited for that album and it was great and I was not disappointed so it clearly easily made its way to the top 10. I did not pick it in the top 5 because, um, I mean, maybe that's also a burden of Michael. All these albums are great. I love the new ones, of course I also love the old ones and, um, and you kind of you always expect a masterpiece. Yeah. It's not like, oh, hey, what a surprise, Opus new album is great. So yeah. that's why it was, it did not make it way to the, to the top five. Also because uh, just from the size here or from uh, how important they are and um, they still can become, it's like, like the Pink Floyd of our generation. Yeah, we the, we started the year with Opeth actually because yeah. the first uh, film that we released this year was the first episode of Into the Machine with uh, with Opeth, and um, they were on the Ghost Reveries tour at that time. So I mean, we kind of are beginning the year and sort of ending the year talking about Opeth, and so I think it goes without saying they have a big influence on us. I think we got it. Cool. Awesome. I think um, that's 2016 in a nutshell for us. Okay, so see you guys 2017. Yeah, see you next time. Hope you like the new show. Freaks out. I am running. So yeah, then it was like, yeah, um, then Mickey should say, kind of approach us right now while I'm talking and pretend like he catches us in the middle of a conversation. Is he Sorry? listening? Sorry? Sorry? Yeah, are you, can are you hear me? Are you? <laughs> I don't think he can hear me. So, so you start coming to us, we'll be in conversation and then I'll turn to you. <laughs> It'll be funny. At least one take. One take. Everybody wants. Fire my A fire my There's one Marty, by my house. Marty, Marty. Yeah, there's one by my house. So maybe we can uh, swing by there, and um, get whatever leftover stuff we yeah, need. Awesome. We got some time um, to talk. Mm -hmm. While we're right over there. Yeah. Oh hi. Uh, what's up, freaks? So you're watching a new show on Freaks TV. It's called Zero, Zero Authority. 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 Uh, zero authority, where the Freaks TV team talks talks and debate. This is bad. Come on, let's start this over. This is terrible. <laughs> All right, are we going to say it? Can you just give me another coffee when you're done with that?